In this video, we'll take a look at just one concept, and that is orthogonal diagonalization. So I wrote it up at the top, and I wrote a couple of notes there. First of all, the process of orthogonal diagonalization only works if that matrix A is symmetric. On the other hand, you'll notice that the process that we go through looks a lot like the process we've been using all along for finding eigenvalues, eigenvectors, and diagonalizing a matrix. It's just that there are certain properties that you'll find as you go through this that you wouldn't necessarily find if you were not starting with a symmetric matrix. So here's the question. Find a matrix P that orthogonally diagonalizes this matrix, 3, 1, 1, 3. All right, I picked a 2 by 2. Let's keep it simple. Notice, first of all, that this thing is a symmetric matrix. The rows become the columns. The columns become the rows. So we'll start with the characteristic polynomial and work our way forward from there. So we want to take the determinant of lambda i minus a, set it equal to 0. So I end up with a lambda minus 3, a negative 1, a negative 1, and another lambda minus 3. Okay. Take that determinant, set it equal to 0. So that gives me lambda squared minus 6 lambda plus 9 minus 1, right? Because that will give me a positive 1, subtract 1. And so I end up with a lambda squared minus 6 lambda plus 8 equals 0. Factor this, uh, lambda minus 4 lambda minus 2. And so I end up with two eigenvalues, lambda equals 4, lambda equals 2. All right, let's go ahead and find those eigenvectors that correspond to the eigenvalues. So for lambda equals 2, I end up with 2, 0, 0, 2. Subtract the original matrix, which was 3, 1, 1, 3. And that gives me negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. Okay. So across the top row, I'll get a 1, 1, drop in my column of zeros, 0, 0, 0. Okay. If x sub 2 is t, x sub 1 is the opposite of t. So the first eigenvector that I get is going to be negative 1, 1. All right, now let's do it for lambda equals 4. For lambda equals 4, I get 4, 0, 0, 4, minus 3, 1, 1, 3. That gives me 1, negative 1, negative 1, 1. All right, so I get a 1, negative 1, 0 a row of zeros. So if x sub 2 is t, then x sub 1 is also t, because t minus t will give me back 0. So my second eigenvector is 1, 1. Okay. These eigenvectors, by the way, form an orthogonal basis for R2. Now what we want to do is we want to normalize those eigenvectors. So this is a different step than before. So now let's normalize the eigenvectors. All right, so our first eigenvector was negative 1, 1. What's the magnitude of that vector? Magnitude of that vector is going to be the square root of negative 1 squared plus positive 1 squared, which is the square root of 2. So my first eigenvector that's normalized will give me negative 1 over the square root of 2, 1 over the square root of 2. And right, our second eigenvector was 1, 1. And right, again, this one's going to have the same magnitude. 1 squared plus 1 squared, square root of 2. So my second eigenvector is 1 over the square root of 2, 1 over the square root of 2. So when I assemble this into a matrix P, then I'm going to end up with a negative 1 over the square root of 2, 1 over the square root of 2. That goes down the first column. 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2 goes down the second column. Okay. This here is the matrix that orthogonally diagonalizes the original matrix that I gave you. Notice that these column vectors are perpendicular to each other. If you take the dot product, you'll get zero, right? You'll get 
a, one, a negative 1 over 2 and a positive 1 over 2. So when you add them together, you'll get 0. That means that they're perpendicular to each other. And then also you notice that they're both of magnitude 1. So if you were to do P inverse times A times P, you would end up with the lambdas down the diagonal, the 2 and the 4, and zeros everywhere else. There's an interesting thing that happens, by the way. Let's go back to the original matrix and try to find the determinant of the matrix. So the determinant of matrix A up here is going to be 3 times 3, which is 9, minus 1 times 1. 9 minus 1 is 8. So the determinant of the original matrix is 8. What if you came down to this uh, similar matrix down here and found the determinant of that new matrix? The determinant of this matrix is just going to be 2 times 4, huh? which is 8. So it turns out, yep, those matrices are similar matrices, and therefore they have the same determinant. I'm going to do one other example. I'm going to start it. I don't think I'm going to go through the whole thing, but I want to at least give you some idea as to what happens in a special case when it asks you to orthogonally diagonalize. Right? So again, our goal here is to find a matrix P that orthogonally diagonalizes the matrix. So here's my original matrix. My original matrix is 4, 2, 2, 2, 4, 2, 2, 2, 4. All right. R rather than go through the whole eigenvalue, eigenvector process that we've been doing over and over, I'm going to tell you that when I work this whole thing out, I ended up with lambda equals 2, having a multiplicity of 2, and lambda equals 8. Now, you notice that this matrix over here is symmetric. And because this is a symmetric matrix, that lambda equals 2 is going to give me two eigenvectors. Right? That we know because the matrix is symmetric. When I run through the process of doing it, it will produce two eigenvectors. At lambda equals 2, I'm going to get the vectors negative 1, 1, 0, and negative 1, 0, 1. For lambda equals 8, I'm going to get the vector 1, 1, 1. Now, if I want an, a matrix that orthogonally diagonalizes it, yes, I'm going to need to turn these all into unit vectors, but do I know that these vectors are all perpendicular to each other? Well, here, I'm going to call these u, v, and w just so we have some reference. Call that u, v, and w. If I take the dot product of u and w, I get negative 1 plus 1 plus 0, so I get 0. If I take the dot product of w and v, I get negative 1 plus 0 plus 1, it's 0. So yes, for each lambda, those eigenvectors are going to be orthogonal to each other. But how about the ones that are produced by the same eigenvalue? How about u and w? What if I took the dot product, uh, I'm sorry, of u and v, the ones that are produced by lambda equals 2? Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1, plus 0 plus 0, uh-oh, these two eigenvectors are not orthogonal. Which means that if you want to turn these into orthogonal vectors, you're going to have to run through Gram-Schmidt. Once you run through Gram-Schmidt, then you just normalize them. And it turns out that, yeah, you get uh, th this lambda equals 8. That guy is easy, right? His magnitude is the square root of 3. So you're going to end up with 1 over the square root of 3 three times. Is that lambda equals 2 that you're going to have to run through the Gram-Schmidt process in order to get two vectors that are orthogonal to each other? So the last example we did, it was only a 2 by 2. It had two eigenvalues. They were automatically orthogonal to each other. But if the question specifically asks for a matrix that orthogonally diagonalizes something, then you've got to check not only for the magnitudes to be 1, you've got to check that the vectors are orthogonal to each other. All right, and that's the end of this section.